our next um, speaker will be um, Dr. Eve Chavez. And it's just another announcement that questions and answers uh, will be part of this um, this webinar, but it will happen towards the end of, of the discussion and the panelists that are speaking. Um, Dr. Eve Chavez is a member of the Gabriano Tongva San Gabriel Band of Mission Indians. She earned her PhD in art history from UCLA and is an assistant professor in the history of art and visual cultural department at UC Santa Cruz. Her current book project examines the artistic contributions of California's first people at the missions and the survivance of California Indian material and culture. Professor Chavez. Thank you, Assembly Member Ramos. I will be sharing a screen now with PowerPoint images, so your screens may change. Okay, so you should all see the first slide now. And I would like to begin by thanking the conference organizers for gathering us here virtually. And I would like to read the UC Santa Cruz land acknowledgement statement. Quote, the land on which we gather is the unceded territory of the Owaswa speaking Yupi tribe, the Amamutsan tribal band comprised of the descendants of indigenous people taken to missions Santa Cruz and San Juan Bautista during Spanish colonization of the Central Coast is today working hard to restore traditional stewardship practices on these lands and heal from historical trauma, end quote. I am fortunate to live in the homelands of the Amamutsin here in Santa Cruz, which is about 350 miles north of my ancestral home in Los Angeles. My Tongva ancestors lived and died at Mission San Gabriel, which you see here. For as long as I can remember, a statue of Junipero Serra has stood outside the entrance to the old church. Behind him, two smaller statues of Franciscan saints stand in niches flanking the choir loft window above the doorway. The visitor unfamiliar with the true history of the missions may be deceived by these monuments to Catholicism and Spain and not recognize the native labor that made this church and other mission buildings. And this situation is not unique to San Gabriel, but I will be focusing mainly on this particular mission. As Alma Mutsen Chairman Val Lopez and Dr. Reina Ramirez will discuss later, UC Santa Cruz removed its El Camino Real Bell from its campus last year. These bells, along with the Junipero Serra statues, embody a complicated history from which native voices are often excluded. To uh, many, the mission structures, the statues of Serra and the bells are symbols of genocide, racism, and the ongoing colonization of our cultures. El Camino Real Bells, seen along the highways and in public spaces, public spaces, evoke bells like these ones you see here that rang at the missions to dictate the movements of our ancestors. Similarly, the statues of Sarah remind many descendants of mission survivors of the control that these institutions continue to exert over our communities. California's genocidal history has motivated descendants of mission survivors to pursue academic career paths to tell the truth of our histories and indigenize mission narratives. As the conference title denotes, indigenous scholars and allies are working towards toppling the mythologies surrounding the missions and their leaders. Yet this process remains quite fraught. Drawing upon my own personal experience in attempting to research mission museum collections, my talk today focuses on the need for an overdue revision of the relationship between the mission museums and indigenous communities. 
Though the missions that the Catholic Church owns and operates are the focus of my talk, I would like to acknowledge that the California Department of Parks and Recreation should be held equally accountable. So here I situate the mission museums as sites of intellectual gatekeeping, where curators and parish staff frequently obstruct native access to mission collections and archival materials. And here I'm showing you uh, a crowded space some of you may have visited to give a sampling of these types of collections. And there are many other materials not even on view uh, at the missions. Intellectual freedom and community engagement will allow Native scholars and knowledge bearers to bring much needed Indigenous perspectives to the investigation of mission museum collections and produce updated scholarship. So to contextualize this discussion, I will be showing a sample of photographs like this one displaying mission museums and grounds. And though I won't be explaining each image, I include them to illustrate the very poorly curated spaces that tourists, fourth graders, and community members traverse with very little context of how those spaces previously functioned. Instead, museum visitors are presented with a one-sided narrative that says little about who made the items on display and how they got there. More importantly, the limited mention of Native contributions is often caught up in myth and tokenism rather than being grounded in fact. If the mission museums engaged Native scholars and communities, then they would learn which materials were indeed made by our ancestors and what should or should not be placed on view. Whereas the mission leaders forced our ancestors to build and occupy these spaces, they today push away their descendants. Aside from the Santa Barbara Mission Archive Library, which is a vital repository where scholars and independent researchers have access to archival materials, the mission museums typically have not welcomed native scholars and communities with open arms. And Caroline touched on this exclusion in her talk as well. I attribute this exclusion to the lack of indigenous staff and leadership at the missions. As far as I am aware, only one of the 21 missions has a native curator. The second one may see the occasional California Indian volunteer for native culture demonstrations. And prior to recent changes in parish leadership, I voluntarily served on the San Gabriel Mission Museum Board. And I want to acknowledge that a leader within our tribe has been a consultant to the mission as well. Despite this limited representation of native peoples, Ongoing tensions across the Native community, the Catholic Church, and non-Native scholars over mission history also pose roadblocks for Native-led research to occur and move forward. The 2015 canonization of Junipero Serra signaled a disregard for Native voices. Many Indigenous peoples from communities within and beyond California as well as non-Native allies spoke out against the canonization. Some praised Pope Francis's decision to make Sarah a saint. Some went further by spraying messages in red paint on mission property and statues of Sarah. And in recent days, uh, similar activities have taken place across the state at the missions and in public spaces. Uh, so those of you following the news will be familiar. And without repeating what has been said and will be said later today, I want to thank my fellow presenters for providing their valuable insight on the significance of this moment. I am optimistic that the brave efforts of community leaders and activists will break down barriers and make Native voices heard beyond our circles. 
yet challenges remain. As anyone who has ever tried to do research at any of the missions is aware. While researching items in a mission museum collection, I contacted the mission to ask if it had high resolution photos of those particular items. And my photos of the items uh, were obscured by the glare of the glass. And here I'm just showing you a sample. These were not the materials or the context I was investigating. This is simply uh, an example to demonstrate the challenge of doing research in any museum, really. So in response to my inquiry, a non-native mission representative interrogated me about my background and made a point of mentioning how the mission had been targeted by protesters during the 2015 canonization. My project was unrelated to Sarah and his canonization. Yet my intentions were immediately presumed to be targeted towards Sarah. While disappointing, this experience was not surprising given the tendency of the missions to maintain a narrative that celebrates Sarah and his fellow Franciscans. The assumption that I was planning to attack the mission and its narrative about Sarah was unfounded. Moreover, the mission representative never acknowledged my original inquiry regarding the photographs. The project ended up going in a different direction, but I bring up this example to highlight one of the challenges scholars face. Junipero Serra is one figure in the complicated history of Spain's colonization of California, yet he is often treated as the personification of the missions and the Catholic Church. His legacy and canonization have drawn tourists and pilgrims to the missions for a variety of reasons, from romanticized nostalgia to spiritual edification. As underfunded institutions, the missions rely on tourism to bring in funds to support projects aimed at restoring crumbling buildings and damaged artworks. And the recent fire at Mission San Gabriel, where my Tongva ancestors lived and died, is a reminder of the fragility of the historic churches and other buildings that remain at these sites. Some may argue that these structures are not worth saving, yet others see them as symbols of our, our ancestors' labor. Without getting into the politics of historic preservation efforts, though, I bring up the San Gabriel Mission Church to emphasize the need for increased involvement of Native scholars and community members at these sites. The missions need Native scholars and cultural practitioners to study collections, especially materials that our ancestors made before it is too late. California is especially vulnerable to earthquakes and wildfires, and many of the missions are located along the San Andreas Fault and in areas susceptible to wildfire. Our publications and research can produce valuable inventories that benefit both our communities and the missions. And as I explained in my recent interview with the Los Angeles Times, these structures are not just about Spanish colonization, but they also reflect the accommodations that Native peoples made under very difficult circumstances. They learned new skills to construct buildings that were not adapted to California's earthquake-prone environment. They attended mass, in the churches, either against their will or maybe reluctantly. And they also made these spaces their own, but that is not always evident to the public. Revisions to Mission Museum didactics and California's fourth grade curriculum are critical to educating California's residents and visitors in, about the truth of our histories. In recent years, California Indian scholars have made significant interventions in the mission narrative, but few publications focus specifically on the mission collections of music books and instruments, as well as the visual culture amongst numerous historical items that our ancestors either used, made, and observed while they lived at these sites. 
racist assumptions influenced much of the early scholarship on the missions and their art. And as I have explained elsewhere, visual evidence is not proof of an artist's ethnicity. However, this fact has not prevented non-native scholars and mission enthusiasts from attributing certain artworks that they deemed primitive to California Indian artists. So until the missions allow us to access and study their collections, these myths will continue to plague public perception of our ancestors' contributions to these contested spaces. Perhaps we can take the San Gabriel Mission Fire as an opportunity to listen to one another and move forward. Thank you.